Today we're making somebody else's recipe for guacamole mead. All right, so one of our VIPs, Barry Drake, who is an awesome guy, sent us some honey along with a recipe to go along with that honey. And he titled his recipe guacamole mead. And at first we're like, what the heck are you doing, Barry? Yep, but sorry, not making avocado into a mead. But that's not what we're doing. So what are we doing, Brian? It's actually an avocado honey mead, avocado blossom honey mead. Now, you might remember, we did avocado mead once before with a different honey. And we didn't this, like it. This one's supposed to be good though. <laughs> so we're going with that. And there's two parts to this. It's all gonna be in one video, but there's two parts. There's some that you do in primary and there's some that you do in conditioning. Today we're gonna do the primary steps. And the first step is going to be to hydrate some yeast. Now, we don't always hydrate our yeast, but we do, well, lately we do because well, we've had a bad experience, okay? So we just want to make sure that our yeast is good. That's like all. many of the things that we add to our brews, besides the main ingredients, this step is an insurance step. It just lets you know what's going on, or perhaps what, more importantly, what isn't, isn't going on. You can do it with just plain water. You can do it with a little bit of sugar in there. Whatever you want to do, usually just a little bit of foam action is enough to tell you. Now, for this, we're using Lauvin EC1118 yeast, which is a pretty high-performing yeast. Barry says half a packet, and I'm just eyeballing half a packet of yeast. No thwacking this time because they'll that would, all come out. That would make a mess. But there is some on the edges, so I'm just going to... Um, sweep? Is that sweep. A, is that a sweep? Yeah, I'm sweeping. And then my patented folding technique. Fold it over, fold it over, fold it down. And then you tape that, stick it in the fridge, use it for next time. That's how I always have half a packet of yeast because I forget that they're in there, you know. And I just want to put a little bit of water in here, just literally a couple ounces. Now this is our filtered water. We use the Berkey filtration system so that way the chlorine has been removed along with some other unwanted elements. Okay, I'm just going to break up some of these clumps because they bother me. I know it'll get there, but they bother me, so... Okay. Got to get out the wuss, also known as the whisk of unusually small size. All right, so we're just going to set that aside now so that way they can foam or not to foam. That is the question. Or Shakespeare all of a sudden. Okay, so next let's, is the honey. Let's talk a little bit more about that honey. What is that honey, Brian? It is avocado blossom honey, raw, U.S. grade A. From? Bill's Bees. Now, I Billsbees.com. They're not a sponsor. Um, I believe Barry bought this from them and sent it to us. But hey, you know, we got their product. We're going to try it out. Billsbees.com. Go check them out. They're in California, by the way. I'm going to put our stainless steel funnel. By the way, everything that we're using has been sanitized in. <laughs> the red pepper red sanitization! sanitization! Which is basically a big red bucket filled with star sand and water, mixed according to the manufacturer's directions. Okay, so, honey. We're putting two and a half pounds of this honey. We happen to have 80 ounces, which is uh, more than two and a half pounds. We're on the grams mode. You want it changed to pounds? I want it changed to pounds. It is sealed for your protection. Pounds. This is dark stuff. Yeah, the other avocado was dark too. I think it's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast, yeah. All right, here we go. Two and a half pounds of honey. Probably not the most exciting television. I may fast forward it or just skip it. It's a, a little earthy, kind of. It's not... Um, not overly sweet, but it's got a, if I recall, we liked the avocado honey last time too, but I trust Barry a lot. He's a, been a long time VIP member. And if he likes this, it's probably good. Well, I think his choice of additions and conditioning are really going to push this in a direction that might be more pleasing. Right. But for now, I have to go wash my finger, which means my whole hands, because I licked it. Honey is in there, which means we do not need the scale anymore, but it's in the funnel. It's still coming out. <laughs> Our yeast is showing a little bit of foam. Let me show you what that looks like. So as you can see, the yeast is in there. There's just a little bit of foam forming on the top, and that's pretty much what you're looking for. A lot of people have asked recently, what, it, what are we looking for? What do we need it to do? Well, pretty much this, though I'd like to see a little bit more activity than that. 
that's the gist of what the yeast should look like. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. If you see some bubbles, it's probably gonna be fine. If you see nothing, one thing to do is add a little bit of sugar or honey in there, mix that around, just like a half a teaspoon or so for this amount, mix it around, give it another 10 or 15 minutes. If you still don't see anything, use a different yeast. But this becomes yeast nutrient. And adjacent to that, or in addition to that, you want to make sure you don't add too much of a fermentable sugar right. in there because you can actually rupture the cells. Like, yeah. oh, that's too much. Osmotic pressure is yeah, a thing. Yeah, it is. The funnel looks mostly clear. So unfortunately, our water is not warm because we did use our filtered water and not tap water. Well, and we didn't heat it. So right. I'm just going to have to pour and hope that I can rinse off most of the funnel. Or at least some of it. A little of it? Any of it? Anything? Bueller? There's Yeah, there's not much in here really. It's okay. One thing I do want to do is mix this up. That's why I only fill it about halfway. For that, I need the thumb saver bung. What is the thumb saver bung, you might ask? Well, it's just a solid stopper. That's really all it is. If you have the cap to your jug, you can just use that. As long as you've tested it first yeah, to make sometimes sure they it leak. doesn't leak. I like to use this because that way I can just push my thumb on it. The reason why I call it the thumb saver is normally there's a hole. And if you push hard enough and long enough or have to mix five or six of these in a day, it does start to actually hurt your thumb. So, you know, I just call it the thumb saver bar. It's just a joke. Don't read too much into it. But now I need to shake the bejesus out of this right after I get the liquid off my hand because it would have slipped out. Okay. And I just shake it until all the bejesus is gone or all the honey's mixed up. This does two things though. Derica, what does it do? Well, the first thing is it's going to create a homogeneous solution. So that way when you take your gravity reading, you're going to get a correct reading and not a false reading. The second thing it does is it oxygenates your brew. As you can see by Brian's demonstration, it is changing colors. That is because oxygen is now infused into that must. Also, general rule of thumb for mixing. If you think you've mixed enough, mix for two more minutes and release the pressure once in a while because it spits at you. If you don't mix it thoroughly, here's the worst thing that'll happen. You won't get an accurate reading, but that doesn't mean it won't ferment. It'll still ferment because the yeast will find that honey, but you won't have an accurate starting gravity, which means you could be thrown off for all of your measurements and your ABV calculation will be inaccurate. So you're probably thinking, but wait, you didn't put all the water in there. So won't you have to mix it again? Yeah. And you are absolutely right. But as you saw, it was so much easier for Brian to get all the honey dissolved into that solution with it only halfway full. And get some air into fully it. Fully full. So that way when we fully full it, it'll be easier to mix and you won't have to mix it as long. Fully. Gotta go wash my hands again. At this stage, we're gonna go off the path. Yeah, we're gonna go a little bit off of his recipe. And what are we doing? We are adding five grams of our nutrient of choice, which is Fermate O. The reason being, Barry showed us that it's not necessary in this particular mead, but because we were gifted this honey and we don't have easy access to get more, we want to just use it as insurance to make sure this ferments. And we're using five grams because we still have to do some testing on this, but we found a little bit of odd flavor sometimes with the 10 grams. So we were thinking maybe it's just too much. Uh, five grams is still like three times more than the manufacturer suggested amount. So that's why we're going to kind of find a happy medium there. Um, one word of note, if you are not using Fermate O, if you are using, say, Fermate K, please don't put in five grams. Use the manufacturer's suggested amount. Otherwise, you will get some weird, funky flavors because it's a different kind of nutrient. It's not just a different letter at the end. It's a different nutrient. Yeah, meaning it has different ingredients. Yes, there's different stuff in there. All right, so we need more water. A little bit. Not a lot because we still have yeast to go. Honey... Oh, we got it mostly gone. Yeah, because... Stop. That's all you needed, just to just to rinse it off, because we still got yeast to go in here too. Do you want to put the yeast in at this moment, or do you want to fill it more with water first? Well, I want to be able to rinse off the yeast from the funnel. So, mm. yeah, see, thinking ahead. But you can put more water in there now, I guess. If it's too concentrated, the yeast won't like it, and they can have problems. Even though it's only going to be a minute or two, I still don't like taking chances like that. So we're just going to leave enough to be able to rinse. There. Okay. So. Just give this a little, one last swirl around and pour it right in. Do you want more water in there to get more? Yeah, put a in? little bit in here. Get as much of that colony going as you can. Give that a little bit of a swirl. And... Okay, now. Where do we want to go? Like 
Just under the letters, I think, is where we decided. Barry said water to a gallon. But I believe a gallon on this is just to the bottom of those letters. But you also have enough water in there, just enough water in there to get there. Because we measured. How I much water you got left? I, well. Because we, you're not quite there. You're almost there, but not quite. So put it all in. I would just go a little bit more. See, the, here's the thing. In these fermenters, if you go too far, slow, stop. Right there. If you go too far. Too much. Yeah, so you put too much in. You didn't stop. You went too fast. In these fermenters, if you put in too much, the foam can push up into the airlock, cause some problems. We're probably going to just start with a blow-off tube on this one right away because I have a feeling foam is going to be a problem. But, as promised, got to mix it up again. It's still sticky. I'm sticky too now. Okay, it's mixed up. I gotta go wash my hands. I'll be right back. So at this stage, it's time for us to take our first hydrometer reading or our original gravity. And for that, we are going to be using our highlighted product of the day. What's our highlighted product of the day? Well, curious that you might ask that. See, a few weeks ago, I put up a poll about sponsored ads like from Squarespace and Skillshare and all these random non-associated things with our channel because they asked us if we wanted to do that. And I was like, I don't think I really want to. You know, that's not really what our channel is about. And we'd rather find items that are workable for you if we need to support the channel. So yes, we're going to start doing this. We're going to choose an item that we're using in that video, whether it's a product or a piece of kit or gear or something that we just got or whatever and call it the highlighted product of the day. Today it's the uh, Brewer's Elite hydrometer and Kits. glass So the full kit cylinder. comes with the hydrometer, comes with the glass cylinder, comes with a hard case to store your hydrometer so you don't accidentally break it, comes with a cleansing cloth. It is a full inclusive kit and we really like it. It does come in a plastic tube as well if you prefer to go that route. Go with the glass, But we have me. found it's so much easier to take the readings with the glass one. But there'll be a link to that in the description and remember your purchase does help support the channel. So it doesn't you. cost you any extra. It's a win-win for everybody. Now, wasn't that better than watching like a Raid Shadow Legends ad or something? <laughs> it's like 1.073. It's right in the middle. Now, what that means, that OG, let me just go over this really quick. If this was to ferment to 1.000, which is considered neutral or dry, it may actually go below that for reasons, because ethanol has a lower specific gravity than water, so it could go below 1.000, but it, let's just say it went to 1.00. Water's specific gravity is 1.000. That gives us almost 10% ABV. Pretty reasonable for a nice average ABV mead, okay? So that's kind of what we're aiming for here. It's not high, it's not low, it's it's smack in the middle. So that's pretty reasonable. With two and a half pounds, that's about what I expect. I'm just going to dump this back in. Because everything was sanitized, we can do that. If you did not sanitize your reading equipment, please don't dump that back in. You can get an infection. Okay, so here is the tray that we use. Notice it has a lip. That means if the brew goes up and out and escapes somehow, it's going to end up in here before it goes all over here. Okay, that's the idea anyway. It's worked out pretty well so far. We've had a couple of bad experiences where we didn't use the tray. Came out the next morning to a lovely puddle of goo all over. Anyway, so I'm just going to put this on the tray. Are you with me so far? The mason next jar. step, it's a mason jar. Any jar will do. This just happens to be named mason. I don't know. Or ball jar. Is it, is it a ball jar? I think it's actually a ball it's jar. It's a ball jar. Wide mouth, no less. Yeah. And in there is what? This is diluted sanitization liquid, but in this particular scenario, it's not even necessary because we're going to have our tube down in there so far, you could just use tap water. Yeah. So, yeah, we are using sanitization fluid direct from Turbos, which means it's mixed to the manufacturer's suggestion. Then I'm just going to take the stopper with a hole in it, some tubing. We have, you know, just this short length. Basically, when we bought our auto siphon, the tubing was like six feet long, and I just said, that's just stupid. So I cut off like two feet, and that's what we use for blow-offs. And I'm just going to jam this end in a bit, not a lot, and then put this end in here. Now, if you need a rubber band, feel free to attach a rubber band. This looks like it might actually work. The other end it's popping. goes into there. Yeah. 
No, it's holding. What are you talking about? It's totally holding. Okay. Sometimes they pop out. If you need to, you can put a rubber band on it. The way I put a rubber band on is... You can't do it I now. can't do it now, but... Here. All right. We'll show you. <laughs> Take the rubber band, thread it onto the tube. Comedy of errors around here, you know? Uh. And then I just kind of drape it over one side and then loop it around the handle. Try not to hit the tubing because you never know if it pushes, it could break the seal and that kind of thing. You don't want to break the seal. So you see how the tube keeps popping out? That's what this is for. Yep. And I'm super specific in how I tape the hose on there. You just, just want to make sure that wherever the tape goes... It is super critical. ...is dry. You must have exactly this length of tape. From the inside, you wrap around, go down the sides, in one swift motion, it's taped up. Done! I just like it to... Go Wow. I just like it to be at the bottom. That way it has the furthest area to go through. And what will happen is it, this is an airlock. Okay. It's just a very rudimentary airlock. The gases will go up through the tube, into the mason jar, through the liquid and out into the atmosphere. Your rubber band fell off already. I will fix the rubber band. All right, so if for some reason you are unable to get an airlock in your particular area... Yeah, this works. That's an alternative for you. Now, the reason why this... Sorry, I have to do that. Okay, let me move it. There we go. The reason why we do this in the early stages where it could be overexcited is an airlock itself can clog pretty easily. Like stuff can get just get jammed in there. It's a smaller hole and it usually gets filled and starts spurting and spraying out and it's, it's just nasty, okay? This has a larger diameter tube than most airlocks and it has a longer area to flow. So it's not gonna clog anywhere near as easily and there's nothing to have to clean out, okay? This will fill up with nastiness and all the excess must that blows out. It's fine. Don't worry about it. After a couple of days, we'll just dump this out, take this off, replace it with an airlock, and that's what you'll see in two seconds. Also, the bottle brushes that I'm going to link in the description below have the really long uh, handle part, mm -hmm. I guess, so you can clean out your whole tube and don't even worry about it. So what are we going to do with this now? What is it? And it's going to take a week, too, maybe three weeks before it ferments out fully. When we see airlock activity pretty much down to nothing, no more bubbles coming up, no more anything happening, we'll be back to show you what it does then. We're also going to switch this out to a normal airlock once it settles down, too. I said that. Oh, good. Yay. Okay, so it's been four weeks. Was this done a little bit before then? Probably. Probably. Was it ready for a reading? Probably. Probably. But we just didn't do it. You know why? Because it just doesn't matter. So, also holidays and life and stuff. All right, so there is a bit of a film at the top, but I have noticed this before in some typical uh, varietal honeys that sometimes they create a film. It's just yeah. something they do. It's nothing to worry about. It doesn't have eyes or hair or nope. ears or teeth, so it's all good. Looks to be reading 1.000. Let me find my pen with a flag. All right, because we sanitized our equipment, we can put our sample back into our fermenter. Very and because we're not racking. Carefully. That is carefully. This is very gassy. So I'm going to uh, give this a bit of a scroll. Do you want to do a, it's Yeah, we're going to do an open because it's super gassy. Now, a lot of people ask about this. Isn't this oxygenating? No. The gas is coming out. CO2 is is definitely heavier than oxygen. It's pushing out anything that's in there. And I'm being kind of careful here. Pretend like you're at a concert and the concert just got let out and everybody's leaving and you're trying to get in that building. Are you having any luck getting in that building? No. That's kind of what's going on here with all those gases coming out. That's oxygen. actually a really good analogy. Can't get back in. See? That airlock is going to town. Nope. Okay. So we're ready now. We're going to let it sit. This has been sitting for longer than it probably should have or could have. Today is the 30th, and it's been sitting since the 3rd, so that's 27 days. <laughs> so it's been sitting for like four weeks. But you know what? It just doesn't matter. Because you know all that happens? It flocculates more. More yeah. stuff falls out of suspension. It's not a big deal. But today, we're going to take our second reading, and you already see I have other stuff ready. We're going to do more stuff to this. So let's just take our hydrometer reading here. Pro tip, if you're going to use a glass hydrometer, make sure that you place it in the tube gently and put it in before you put any liquid in. It'll make the reading a lot easier. 
Last time we were at 1.000, so I'm not expecting that it changed all that much, if it changed at all. 1.000. Bellissimo. So that means it is time for us to do its first racking, which is what we are prepared for, as you can see by the vessel here. So we are we're going We're also doing something a little unique this time. We are racking to a larger vessel. For reasons. There's a reason. We're going to be adding more liquid to this. So first, our sample goes in gently because this was sanitized. And if you notice, I tilted the vessel for Brian to put that in there because it, it would allow the liquid to hit a surface and then drain down, right. limiting the oxygenation of the brew, which is what we're trying to do with all of the things oh, that we're doing before here. Before we do that, we got other stuff to do. Are we gonna put she that? thought we were going to rack. Yep. Well, see, there's a reason. These are finite amounts. This is not. Okay. I understand that. Okay, so Barry Drake, one of our VIPs, made up this recipe. And it's a little unusual. I will, I will have to admit this. But what we did is we took some cilantro and we made a tea from it. It's got a very slight green color, as you yep. can probably see. And there's two cups, almost two cups. I, I'm a little bit short on that. So 16 ounces of cilantro tea going in. And you can't have guacamole without lime juice. So we have fresh from our limes in our backyard, four ounces of lime juice, according to Barry's recipe. This is where we went a little bit different than what he said. We didn't use limes, limes, we used rangpur limes, which is limey-like. Lime adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we get too carried away with our racking, can we please put that on our notes? Oh, I will. there's four ounces of lime juice and 16 ounces of lunch of tea. Look at that! He already did. She doubted me. Whoa. Almost had a hydropeter situation. All right, so there is a pretty decent amount of lees on the bottom here, so I'm going to leave the cap on, and we're going to do our racking procedure using an auto siphon. If you don't have an auto siphon, we'll have a link to it in the description. They are like the simplest way. They're like 20 bucks. Comes with an extra long piece of tubing. You can cut that in half and still have enough for a blow off tube later on. But they work really, really simply. We have a video des describing the entire process, but the summation is source higher, destination lower. Put it halfway down, get it started, and it just works. Okay, so we racked it and I just stirred it up to get everything flowing and mixed together. And it's at the shoulders, not really my favorite place to be, but you know, I'll deal with it. It's okay. I don't think we're going to have a problem. But what I want to do is calculate the ABV for you. And at first glance you go, but wait a minute, you added cilantro tea and lime juice. So how can you possibly calculate the ABV? Well, we do have a video on this, but I learned a technique where you use a hydrometer and a refractometer, just a basic glass hydrometer and a $20 refractometer from Amazon, and you can get your ABV. So it starts with this. Get our hydrometer reading, which is 1.002. Now we're gonna take a refractometer reading. Now, one thing of note, refractometers are great, except that when there's alcohol present, you need a calculator in order to convert them properly. In this case, you wanna use the raw number right from the refractometer. I gotta take my glasses off to do it. 8.6. Now, the third element that you need is the temperature. So I'm gonna go grab our, our probe. probe thermometers, so that way we can figure out exactly what our temperature is. Okay, I'm gonna use an app called FirmCalc. And with this app, you can actually put in all these numbers and you take the temperature of your brew. We just sanitized the tip of the thermometer so we can be the most accurate that we can be. Looks like 75 degrees to me. Here's where I have a little bit of an issue with this method, and I'm glad to be able to show you this. This is artificially sweetened because of the lime juice, okay? That's throwing off the measurement here. So if you have anything that is sweetened, this isn't gonna work. This will require more testing. I don't like that because if I do my usual measurements, I can only approximate. So if we have a 1.073, minus 1.000, that gives us 0 0.073 points used times 135 is only 9.8%. So how can it be higher now? We, we didn't add it. more alcohol, we diluted it. Yeah. But I can also do a step further because if we know that a gallon is 128 ounces, I can approximate how much the dilution added. We added 20 ounces. So we have 128 ounces times 9.8% 
is 1,254.4, that's the numbers of material, plus 20 at zero alcohol, divided by 148, which is the total number of ounces, gives me 8.6%. So my grand plans of using the hydrometer refractometer method to calculate ABV when you dilute doesn't work. So what did that tell you? What did the app tell you? The app said 11 point something. 11 point something. Okay. Because, and we've tested this multiple times, and that's why we're a little flummoxed right now, because this is the first time we've, we saw a discrepancy worth noting. Uh, the other times, it was either exactly what we had figured out on our or within a half OG, point. or just, just a couple of points. Yeah, this is literally showing the lowest as 10.9%, and that's just not possible. Well, that is curious. Mm -hmm. It's a little disappointing, actually. I was I was hoping it'd be more accurate, it's but just, maybe someone out there knows more about this than we do because this is only this is a new thing. We've not really used this much, so I'm going to say it's closer to that 8.6 mark. It's not 10.9 percent. There's no way the alcohol went up by adding cilantro and lime juice. <laughs> That's just not possible. And this is this is the joy of home brewing, folks. You never know exactly what's going to happen. I have tested that theory on several different brews, and this is the first always time. came out great. This is the first time it threw it off, yeah. and that makes me really wonder why it threw it off. I don't fully understand the reasoning why that wouldn't work. And to go from 1.000 to 1.002 doesn't seem like a large enough right. variance to cause that discrepancy. So the truth is, we just don't know. But this is going to sit under airlock. We're going to stick the airlock back in there. And it's going to sit on the shelf of fermentation for a couple of weeks to settle out some more. And we'll be back to show you what it is then. It's been nine days and now it is time to taste this. This should be the finished product because this is not our recipe. Therefore, we are merely tasters. Now granted, before we bottle this, we're going to rack it and then bottle it. Yeah, because uh, there's still some but lime juice floaters in there. That's not going to change the flavor. But what I mean is, this is not our recipe, so we're not going to be making adjustments to it. We're going to just taste it as it is. And because it's not our recipe and it's one of our VIPs, we're not going to put score on it either. Our we're... predictions are, I'm going to like it more than Brian. Yep, I predict I'm not going to like it. And Barry said that already. He knew this was not really the thing that I would like, but it is a possibility that Derek would like it. Very, very mild haze. Okay, last video that we did, the Earl Grey one year, people got crazy about that. There's a very slight haze. If you hold it up to light, there's a very slight haze. So but to, it's not... to clarify, ha ha ha, pun intended, what Brian means by that is that it's not crystal, crystal sharp, yeah. nothing clear. It's still nicely cleared. Like, it's, I mean, this is nicely cleared. And I think when you use mild haze, people immediately think fog and... That's not what we're having here. There's just... It's very slightly not clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> color is nice. Got a nice color. The aroma is potent. Yeah, it really does have a strong uh, limey, limey but smell. But it's, it's definitely honey, too. Like I Yeah, I get I, a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of lime, a little bit of honey. Yeah. It's guac. Not getting a lot of avocado, but it's avocado well, blossom. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. I, and it's, it's funny because we did the avocado honey mead uh, prior to this and people were going crazy thinking we put avocados in it. And it's like, no, it's the honey that the, they got the nectar from the avocado. Anyway. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. The lime really does make this work. Yes. A little bit of a cilantro flavor in there too, but the lime and the, the honey really works. Just needed to put it in a coconut and be perfect. Ooh. I actually am really enjoying this. I'm enjoying the flavors. I've really been big into lime lately. I don't know. It's, it's I don't my really thing. like lime. Brian, That's kind of the problem. Brian's not really a citrus guy. I love citrus. I don't typically like it fermented, but the lemon and the lime, well, the yeah. lime mostly seems to work for me fermented. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying this. I just want to go on record and say, this tastes nothing like guacamole. Nothing like guacamole. It's more like a lime cilantro mead. It's inspired. Which is wonderful. Inspired. I just want to be clear because people will hear guacamole mead and, and go crazy that it's going to taste like avocado. No, it, it's cilantro lime mead. That's really what it comes down to. It's it just the me, idea of having the avocado blossom. It reminds me of some of the more tropical yep. 
uh, cocktails that are really familiar are really popular here in Florida. They love to put citrus variants and herb variants, and sometimes they'll throw a cucumber in there. I don't know. It's it's a thing here. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of that. I just did get the cilantro. Oh, I've been getting it since I've, like the I've first been flavor focused taste. on the lime. And, but this and is about eight point six percent, eight point five percent, somewhere in that range. I figured it out with the dilution and everything. It comes out to about. 8.6. I actually like it. I Barry, this is good. It's a nice, simple recipe yeah. that actually just really works yeah. uh, pretty well. I I give it two thumbs up. Yeah, if I, it was if it was for me, I would sweeten this a little bit. That's it. Because this is dry. This is totally 1.000 dry. If the lime juice added I'm still reading anything. honey even on the flavor, so oh, it's sure. not like it. Well, okay, honey character doesn't necessarily mean sweet. I know. I'm just saying that because mm -hmm. sometimes people think that the honey is lost. No, no, there's. It is not. You would know this is mead. It is very honey, easily. lime with some cilantro. Right. Uh, we could do a repeatability on this. Repeatability on this, I think, is like a nine. Yeah. It was pretty straightforward. It was pretty, pretty straightforward. Simple. The only thing that was kind of weird was the cilantro tea, but that much tea basically that, just it made me question it. I will be honest. Yeah. Sixteen ounces of cilantro tea really. Yeah. Don't have any problems. Um, but honestly, once it's all said and done, it came out lovely. It's yeah. a nice, easy drinker. Yeah. Put put that over ice in the oh, summertime yeah. or something, that'd be great. Yeah. I, I don't see any issues with that. It's not really something I would necessarily reach for, but if handed it, I would drink it. I will drink it all. Yes. Thank you very much. She totally will. And be happy about it. So, Barry, thank you so much for submitting the recipe and for giving us the honey to make it. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.